and welcome to Seal Rescue Ireland. My name is Nikki, I'm the Education Manager here, and welcome to episode six of our eight-part mini-series. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about unsustainable fishing practices and how that can have a huge impact on something that's called biodiversity. It's a lot of information to cover, so let's get started. wondering, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity includes all the different types of animals and plants that live together in their unique locations and how they're all interconnected and how they can rely on each other to survive. So whenever we say marine biodiversity, we mean that, but in the ocean. Marine biodiversity is under threat and a lot of the things that are causing this threat are the issues that we've talked about in our previous episodes already like climate change and water pollution. But one of the biggest threats facing marine biodiversity comes directly from humans in the form of unsustainable fishing practices, which means that some fishing boats are simply taking too many fish out of the sea. Seals require a lot of energy to go hunt whenever they're hungry because unlike humans, they can't just walk into a supermarket and stock up on food whenever they want. Whenever fish numbers decline, that makes it even harder for seals to get their food which might mean actually going out and hunting for longer periods of time or swimming out even further than what they're used to normally, which is a huge drain on all of that energy. Unfortunately, sometimes seals might not get the right amount of food that they need in order to survive, which not only has a huge impact on the seal, but it has a huge impact on the ecosystem as well. Seals are very important to the marine environment, so much so that they're called a bioindicator species, which means that we can learn a lot about the marine environment through studying our seals. Seals have lots of natural predators, like sharks and orcas, but since they're not very common in Irish waters, in Ireland, seals are considered to be at the top of the food chain, and they're called apex predators. Food chains are really delicate systems, which can shift and change really easily when just one element goes out of whack. To learn a little bit more about food chains, let's go talk to our friend, scientist Shiva. Thanks, Nikki. Food chains are really important, and they show us how energy flows from one organism to another in an ecosystem. It shows us how these organisms work together and rely on each other to survive. Food chains have a lot of different levels, and there are even food webs, which are essentially lots of food chains linked together. Today, I'm going to talk you through a terrestrial, land-based, and a marine ocean-based food chain. So let's start with a simple terrestrial food chain, which might seem a little bit familiar because there are a few species that are local to Ireland. Here we have some grass, which will get eaten by a rabbit, which will get eaten by a fox. Next, we have small fish that eat the plankton, large fish that eat the small fish. And finally, we get to the top of our food chain, where we have our marine mammals, like our seal, who eats the large fish. It goes plankton, small fish, large fish, and seal. As you can see, everything works really well when we're just talking about one plant or animal. But let's try and imagine that these represent lots of plants and animals within an ecosystem. And say there is some sort of a disruption. For example, if all the foxes in the ecosystem disappeared, that might seem great for the rabbits at first, as they wouldn't have any predators. But what happens when there is nothing keeping the rabbit population in check? We would get too many rabbits. Eventually, the rabbit population would get so big that they deplete their food source, grass. Without enough food, the rabbits would then starve or become prone to illness, which could eventually lead to the rabbit population collapsing as well. This is why it's so important for ecosystems to stay balanced, with plants and animals all serving their important roles. This is also important for our marine food chain. Imagine if our seals at the top of the food chain suddenly disappeared. That might create an overpopulation of large fish at first, but then their food source, which is the smaller fish, will become depleted from having so many predators leading to an ecosystem collapse. This is called a trophic cascade and lets us know why apex predators are so important to the ecosystem they live in. Even though these are really simple food chains, everything we see in nature is interconnected and lots of animals rely on each other to survive and thrive in their natural environment. And with that, back to you, Nikki. 
There's a lot of ways in which seals can be really important for marine biodiversity. For example, if seals are hunting and come across a large school of fish, they're more likely to catch the slow, weaker fish as opposed to the faster, stronger fish. This allows the faster, stronger fish to survive and reproduce, passing on their genes for the next generation of fish. So in that way, seals are partially responsible for keeping fish healthy and strong. And they've been doing that in Irish waters for years and years. Not only that, seals poop. Seals poop a lot, and there's lots of nutrients in it, which means that it's useful for lots of other organisms like plankton. Like we were learning with scientist Shiva, plankton is the base of all of the marine food chains, so it's really important to keep the plankton fed, because without that plankton, there wouldn't be any fish to feed either. This leads us back to marine biodiversity's biggest threat, unsustainable fishing methods. In the past, most fishing was done from small, local boats close to shore, which means that the amount of fish taken did not actually impact overall biodiversity all that much. However, due to modern technology, there are now industrial fishing vessels that can stay out for weeks at sea with nets that are large enough to hold 17 jumbo jet airplanes. Not only do these large-scale fishing boats take so much fish out of the sea that it disrupts the ecosystem balance, it occurs so often that the surviving fish don't even get the chance to reproduce and recover their populations. This is what we refer to as unsustainable fishing, because if these techniques continue, the sea will eventually run out of fish. This would put all fishers out of business, the small sustainable ones as well as the large unsustainable ones, and this will also mean that seals and other marine animals will no longer have their only source of food. We need to make sure that we're all doing our part to protect biodiversity as much as possible. Overfishing is a really large and complicated issue, but together we can take small steps towards making it more easy. For example, if we do like to eat seafood, we can make sure that the seafood that we eat is sustainably sourced, which makes sure that we're not supporting unsustainable large fishing practices like this, and we're supporting small-scale sustainable fishing practices like this instead. But how do we know what's sustainable and what isn't? Thankfully, there's lots of really great resources to help us learn about how our fish are sourced. The Marine Conservation Society actually also has a really great app that you can download, which we'll be linking in this video. Now for an activity that everyone can do at home is a backyard biodiversity bingo sheet, which we're gonna link in the description of this video. We hope you enjoy your backyard biodiversity sheet, either in your back garden or in your local green space. At the time of filming this video, Ireland is currently under lockdown due to coronavirus, so we want to make sure everyone is being as safe as possible. So please make sure you follow the guidelines that are put in place by your local government. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you learned a little bit more about biodiversity and unsustainable fishing practices and how that can have a huge impact on our environment and our seals. In our next episode, we're going to be talking to you a little bit about human disturbance and the different types of ways that humans can directly impact our seals. Make sure you're following us on all of our social media platforms. We're at Seal Rescue Ireland on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and we're at Seal underscore Rescue on Twitter. Thank you again so much for tuning into today's episode. Let's stay healthy, stay safe, and let's do this together. Bye, everyone.